So one of the highlights of Reactor 6 release is the ZDF toolkit. As many of you probably heard, uh, ZDF stands for Zero Delay Feedback. This is an efficient method of designing good sounding virtual analog filters. Being graphical, uh, the method bears a strong similarity to reactor structures and the ZDF toolkit is exploiting that similarity. The toolkit consists of a set of reactor core macros implementing digital models of analog block diagram elements and you simply build GDF filters by connecting these macros together. That's it. And in fact, the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and in fact, the absolute majority of new Reactor 6 filters have been built this way uh, simply by using the GDF toolkit. The ZDF method is not only about building models of existing analog filters, it is also a way to construct new digital filters which do not have an analog prototype. And one way of constructing such new filters is by simply modifying the existing ones. So imagine doing the same in hardware. Yeah, so you have a hardware modular rack, yeah, taking one filter module out, opening it up, taking a soldering iron, yeah, changing the way the components are connected, this will probably be relatively time consuming and also unless you really know what you're doing, you're going to get a few short circuits and blow up a few components. Yeah, there goes your filter. Uh, fortunately, in software, things are uh, much quicker and safer and this is what we're going to do tonight. A kind of low-level model patching under the hood of reactor. <laughs> Since we're Relatively short on time, we have already prepared a reactor setup here in advance. Yeah, we're having here on screen. It's based around a stock core library macro, a ZDF filter loosely emulating a famous analog filter of the past, the operational transconductance amplifier ladder filter, uh, something like this SM2040. And we have the filter structure here on the screen. It's built around these four serially connected one-pole filters. If we look into this one-pole, it's just an integrator with negative feedback. And this saturator in front of the integrator is emulating the nonlinear effects of a differential transistor amplifier. And Going back out, we also see the external feedback around this chain of four one poles uh, containing another saturator and the feedback gain control. And that's pretty much it. That's the structure of the original stock filter. Except for the sake of visual clarity, we have removed the components which will not be in use tonight. And we have already added in advance to new components, the state variable filter here and the subtractor here. They are not in use yet. You can see their outputs are not connected. We'll need them later. In this setup, this filter is being fed with a square waveform, which is also modulating the filter at the audio rate. And we have an LFO and a couple of effects. And this is how the original setup is sounding like. <laughs> Please keep in mind that uh, we are not trying to build a particular filter. You have to look at the structure as a kind of low-level modular patch. And our intention is to change a few of the patch chords and see if we can get other interesting sounds out of this patch. Therefore, we're not listening to the raw output of the filter, but to a more complicated structure with modulations and effects to get more interesting sound out of it. This is not filter building, this is sound design that we are doing. As another notice, since the filter is highly nonlinear, we're running this setup at 176 kilohertz sampling rate to minimize or to reduce the digital artifacts coming from the nonlinearities. But actually, at the setting which we currently have here, uh, these artifacts are not that strong. We could also switch to 44 kilohertz. You can hear it sounds pretty much the same, right? But since we're going to do a number of changes to this patch later, yeah, let's go back to a higher sampling rate for better safety. And let's begin with the modifications. So as the first thing which we're going to do, we're going to introduce a two-pole resonating filter into the feedback path. Let's start with a low pass with a relatively low resonance. So now 
we can make the cutoff of this low pass track, the cutoff of the main filter. Let's try band pass instead. Remove the tracking. Try high pass. Increase the resonance. We can also use a different pickup point for the main feedback. For example, we can take the high pass output of the second one pole. Switch to a low pass in the feedback again. We can use another feedback pickup point, the subtractor here, taking the difference of the high pass outputs of the first and the fourth stages. Reduce the resonance back. Use the band pass. Now we can play a bit with the controls. So the, so the good news is, the cool thing about this is that you don't really need to understand what you're doing when you're doing this kind of experiments. I love that. That's, I'm sold. Because in the end, it's not about doing right or wrong things here. Uh, we're just trying to get cool sounds. And well, no, you know what you're doing, I, I think. Yeah, uh, but I'm, 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 I'm not really. 50%, like, I really didn't try to analyze what I'm doing from a scientific yeah. point of view. I know a little bit what these things are about, but I couldn't predict the sounds myself. Ah, so even uh, you're doing some experimentation. Exactly. I was just randomly picking up some things. Of course, I remembered which ones sound cooler and tried to keep this for the presentation, but that's a relatively random patching. Well, thanks so much for showing us that. Terrific. So we've seen blocks.